Hi and welcome to episode 10 of the Neuroendocrine Cancer Nutrition Series. So this episode will be all about niacin. Uh, this is vitamin B3 and this is really an episode that's aimed at those people with carcinoid syndrome and serotonin producing tumours. So I thought I'd talk about niacin this week because I was due to talk about niacin at the ENEX conference um, in Barcelona and unfortunately it's been cancelled due to the COVID-19 virus so I thought I would just go ahead and talk um, on YouTube anyway um, but just importantly this is my opinion about niacin, niacin testing and dosing. Um, we are writing dietitian guidelines and um, they're not ready, they haven't been discussed between dietitians, so it is my opinion on the topic of niacin. Um, so, when we're talking about niacin, um, we're talking about vitamin B3, nicotinamide and nicotinic acid. Outside of malnourished populations um, and patients with carcinoid syndrome, niacin deficiency and the resulting pellagra symptoms are very rare. So I think it's important to define the difference between what I mean about niacin deficiency and pellagra. Pellagra is the resulting disorder, so the symptoms that occur due to biochemical deficiency of niacin, so where you have a low level shown in a blood test, or through a urine test. Pellagra is often described as the three Ds or the four Ds. So those three Ds are dementia, dermatitis, diarrhea, and the fourth D is unfortunately death, which can occur if you have niacin deficiency long term. So what exactly are we looking for in terms of pellagra? So um, the first symptom of pellagra often affects the skin. So it's characteristic dermatitis on areas of the skin that are um, exposed to the sun. Um, it most frequently becomes chronic, rough, scaly and hard with formation of crusts as a result of haemorrhage. A broad band of this dermatitis is frequently found around the neck. Um, in terms of the next D, this is diarrhoea. Uh, the digestive tract and nervous system may be involved with glossitis, stomatitis and gastroenteritis, so inflammation of the mouth and the tongue and the um, gastrointestinal tract, um, resulting with diarrhoea, profuse watery and sometimes bloody stools. Uh, and then the third D, to do with dementia and mental issues um, involves anxiety, depression, tremor, reduced or absent tendon reflexes, encephalopathy, which is swelling of the brain, um, which may occur in severe cases. So you're probably thinking, why is niacin deficiency such an issue and why am I at risk of pellagra? Um, because I've got carcinoid syndrome. Um, or a serotonin producing tumour, which we used to call a carcinoid tumour. Basically, there are two competing pathways in how to break down the amino acid tryptophan. The tryptophan is found in protein, and there are two competing pathways um, when you have this carcinoid syndrome. So basically, one side of the degradation and metabolism of tryptophan involves the production of serotonin and then from that um, the um, 5-HIA that you will see in your blood tests or your urine tests. The other side is what normal healthy humans will produce which is niacin. So when you have uncontrolled carcinoid syndrome the weight goes towards the um, production of 5-HIA instead. So the other study was actually in the Netherlands and they published this in 2016. Um, they had 42 patients with serotonin producing tumours and they did different tests. So this one they looked at plasma tryptophan levels which is that amino acid which is degraded by two different competing pathways. Then they looked at 
the urine levels of something called N1MN. So this is a niacin metabolite. What the other pathway results in um, once niacin is broken down. They found that biochemical niacin deficiency was found in 45% um, of patients. In this study, when these patients were found to be deficient, they were then given a range of different doses of niacin supplements. At the end of it, they actually found out that an average dose of 144 milligrams of nicotinamide was required per day to get an upper normal level. So the best test to use does seem to be that um, test from the second study, the N1MN, which is the urine test. Um, and this will find out if someone is deficient. It doesn't tell you if someone has pellagra because those symptoms have to be assessed together with the actual deficiency results. The problem with the N1MN test is that the vast majority of net centres do not have access to the test. I don't think there's anyone in the UK even which can, um, which can run those tests for us. So we're then in the position of kind of guessing who has um, a mild, moderate or severe deficiency. So what we do um, is try to prevent a deficiency in those people that we think are at risk and those are the people that have serotonin producing tumours. We know those people because they have um, raised 5-HIAA levels. So what we do is um, use a nicotinamide um, supplement, which is the supplemental form of niacin. And it can be with an, a B multi-vitamin um, supplement or a complex um, or a B strong compound. So because it's impossible to treat a niacin deficiency or pellagra with food alone, I do recommend a nicotinamide containing supplement um, around 100 milligrams per day to prevent deficiency. Of course, treatment of pellagra and niacin deficiency are different and we go by the information from the World Health Organisation on doing that. So they recommend that a daily dose of 300 milligrams of nicotinamide in divided doses is given um, for three to four weeks. So if you imagine that at diagnosis, um, most people have been living with this serotonin producing tumour for, you know, 5, 10, 15 years even. Um, this means that your niacin levels will probably be very low. It's very possible for you to be deficient at diagnosis and therefore we need to look at the treatment plan from the World Health Organisation rather than the prevention plan. So in terms of what to take, nicotinamide is probably the preferred option over nicotinic acid. Um, it has less side effects, although some of these supplements can cause this flushing, but this is actually probably um, not, not harmful for you to have. It's just more embarrassing, annoying. Um, we know that with treatment with this nicotinamide, symptoms will start to go away if you have um, obvious pellagra symptoms. So things like acute inflammation of the tongue and mouth and diarrhea will go away within a few days of treatment. Um, the dementia and dermatitis usually improve significantly within the first week of therapy. In chronic cases where you've been um, deprived of niacin for so long, um, there's a slightly longer recovery, um, but appetite and general health will improve rapidly. So you may have heard about the diets providing lots of tryptophan um, to prevent this deficiency or treat it, but actually it, it does need supplements. Um, we do aim, obviously, for a high-protein diet with neuroendocrine cancer, up to 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. Um, but even that amount of tryptophan um, isn't going to help your niacin levels that much. Um, so we are looking at um, preventing and treatment with supplements. So that's it for episode 10. Join me in a few weeks for episode 11.